representing Kings and hailing from Plainview, Long Island, New York, weighing in at 215 pounds. He's better than you, and you know it. That's what I Sterling on this day, March 9th, 2019, 1,274 days of limitless wrestling, we are crowning our first champion. John, I am thrilled to be here to call this match history in the making. And knowing the history of limitless wrestling, there are no more appropriate competitors to crown such a champion than the four in this ring tonight. Retrosexual Anthony Green, a product of the very first show for Limitless Wrestling. Mm -hmm. JT Dunn, who found himself in his edge, aligning the Kings with Maxwell Jacob Friedman, standing to the right of JT Dunn as we speak. And then the hometown boy, AC Baby, Ace Romero. A little two-on-two -two action here to start at least. I mean, that's the smart strategy. That's our alignment here. Kings on the right side, formerly known as Take Me Home Tonight on the left. That's what we got. And that's smart. Because when you got two guys aligned, you want to make sure that you go in with a friend. And Retro and AC found that in each other. Aha, aha, and the aha, and the Kings, Smart. the Kings taking it to the outside. John, they're not going to play Ace and Retro's game. They're going to play their own game. Retro and Ace with an uneasy partnership themselves. Looks like they're taking a rest out there. And taking a moment to trumpet their own horns. Looks like. Looks like they're waiting for Retro and AC to uh, to wrestle. They want the action to start off with the two in the ring. Might be a wise decision when you consider the history of Anthony Green and Ace Romero 
great friends, great enemies. Not even just in Limitless, just in general. Here we Up go. Down. Action started in this historic main event. Caught yeah. Anthony Green and the fireman's carry slips out the back. Wants to hip toss ace. Nope. Hey. Anthony Green, amazing balance. And ducks the Harlem Whoa. sidekick. What we saw there is a lot of history. Two men that know each other very well. The king's out here. Jaw jacking with the crowd. And I think Ace and AG have had enough. But they've turned their backs, which is not smart. Guys. Oh! Ow. Strong right hand from Ace Romero and a boot from Anthony Green. Now, John, the one weird thing is, while we started with some teams here, only one man can win the match. These uneasy, uneasy partnerships, they may pay dividends at the beginning of the match, but you said it best. Only one can be champion. Uh, MJF and JT have guaranteed that a member of the Kings will win, but which one? Absolutely. I don't think either one of them is going to win right now. Oh, no, no, no. Woo. Oh, little vaudeville for you. And it's back to Anthony Green and Ace Romero. Want to talk about day one guys for Limitless Wrestling. Yes. Oh. And they crisscrossing opposite corners, stereo lariatos. Well played, Black Hole Slam. Ace Romero pants at Anthony Green. Anthony Green might need a minute. While surprising, it's also not surprising. Because like I said, only one man can win this championship. All the chips are on the table in this one here. And the Kings sending out Ace Romero unceremoniously. Slides through with the baseball slide. You have no cool shit that you do. Is Max gonna dive? JT saying, do that cool thing you do. Here we go. Here comes MJF, cool thing. Whoa! Whoa! Variation of the Fosbury flop. Do we call that the Friedman flop? Wow. You and I both know that MJF and he's endless tricks in his book, and my goodness. AG look at the tightrope into the cross body. Anthony Green, another one who possesses unconventional athleticism, some amazing creativity. It's like he was Wait born a in a wrestling ring. Wait a minute. Ace has an idea here. We've seen this before. Oh no. Watch out! Don't make out AC! My God! That's almost 400 pounds of man flying through the air. And, and these, these main wrestling fans, they want their boy to bring it home. Yeah. Ace Romero in kind, born in Saco, Maine, wants everything to bring this title home. You know, we talk about a capacity crowd here. Ooh. Stiff right. Firmly behind Ace, would you say? We had a little, a couple cheers there for Maxwell in the beginning, but. AG's Ace gotten is, some. We're at a point here where these, these fans tell us, they tell the story that we have four pioneers of Limitless Wrestling battling for the honor to call themselves the first champion. We're going in the crowd here, John. Yeah. This brawl just reached that Pier 6 level that we all know and, well, kind of worry about. We got chairs getting thrown. Uh-oh. I'm going to do the best I can to see here. 
vision impeded from the commentation. JT done on the top of the lockers in the corner. JT never afraid to scale anything that's nailed down. Now hold on, AG's up there too. We've seen JT dive right off these lockers before. But wanna, there's two of them up there. You want to talk about caution being thrown to the oh, wind no. now. MJF trying to pull AG right off. Oh! Trepidation hanging in the air. The fate of JT Dunn and Anthony Green. Oh! AG just throwing JT's head. Oh! The desire, the hunger on full display as Anthony Green takes a tumble. And JT Dunn, the only man left in no man's land. Woo! And a hero this time. JT Dunn calls himself a king. He's the king of flight tonight. Expletives of adoration being sent out by the Westbrook faithful. Clearly all four men are picking themselves up off the concrete. It's, it's totally obvious, John, that these guys are willing to do whatever it takes to win this championship. The sweat, the agony that's spilling figuratively into this Limitless Wrestling Championship as each of these men take minutes off each other's lives just like that. John, this is a fatal four-way. That means anything in this building can be used as a weapon, and they are utilizing these lockers. We're placing an emphasis a little too much on fatal. The brawl continues here, as this is the dance. JT Dunn trying to make his way, but actually both the Kings making their way back to the ring right now. Followed in tow by AC Baby in firm control. And JT Dunn firing back. Thank you. You want to talk about one of the most prolific strikers in wrestling today? You're looking at the JT Dunn. And Ace Romero summoning the energy of the state of Maine. Most of the crowd here still on their feet. JT on his feet, rubber legs, but on his feet nonetheless. He doesn't see Maxwell take him. Wow. MJF. Oh. Trying to clip away the giant legs of Ace Romero, but two get the job done. John, you gotta think that was in their playbook all along. You look at a guy like Ace Romero, you take out the legs, then what? Then what? And leave it to Maxwell Jacob Friedman to pick the right place and right time to play such a card. Just adding insult to injury there. Oh, yeah. And at this point, they're working on the mobility of Ace Romero. I mean, I, I got to assume that the plan is take them both out. Oh. Oh. Anthony Green. All the mustard on all those strikes. And in terms of who this might mean the most to, you have to give it to Anthony Green. You want to talk about working your way up from the pre-show to the main event. Nobody's written the book on that like Anthony Green. Oh! 
again, the numbers game. The Kings working as a team against two other individuals. Absolutely, and now they're back to work on Ace Romero. Definitely the smart move. And Maxwell Jacob Friedman just running, rubbing the salt in the wounds of the state of Maine as he picks apart their boy, Ace Romero. John, I want to point this out. Perhaps you saw just then, Max did the motion for the championship belt. But again, they're working as a team here. Only one can win. On one hand, we had heard comments from both of them that a king is going to walk out champion. Now the question is, when it's down, if it comes down to the two of them, will the kings fall apart? I have to assume they have a plan, but we'll only time with them. And you gotta think part of the plan is taking this giant down. You know, as a master strategist yourself, real recognizes real, and Max of Jacob Friedman has to be listed alongside yourself as one of the best strategists in the game today. Now, I gotta tell you, I don't know about this showboating. Oh! Hey, but it seems to be working. It's that it's that striking of JT Dunn, the perfect placement of such a blistering knee. A double sleep. A little hey. double sleep. You know, that's very interesting. You've got that sideways momentum from yep. each king pulling on the carotid arteries. This double sleeper double could the torque. be brilliant. He's, he's going down. I'd say His I'd arms, I think, just went limp. I'm, if I'm they both tap him out, then what? I'm <laughs> if he is this out, are they both the champion? No. You were saying that they had to have had a game plan. Yep. Was that it? And is it backfiring right now? The strength here. Oh! Wow! You're a double back body. John, the damage done on that on that double sleeper hold. I mean, he wasn't breathing for a minute. Still trying to collect himself. I don't know if you noticed, AG in the corner making his way back up. All four men. Clearly. Oh! Wow! All four Huge. men clearly have had a lot of their stamina taken out of them. But this is where heart, this is where oh. that late match adrenaline comes into play. Ace Romero stopping Anthony Green on the top rope. And what does he have in mind? And look at that. We got JT Dunn and MJF. Putting together a little spur of the moment game plan here, and and uh, Ace Ace helping each other up. I we, see it. Oh, uh huh. There we go. Setting up an electric chair. Oh my God, AG's gonna get the worst of this. Ah! Oh! Anthony Green, eye on the back of his neck. My God. Somebody could pin AG right now, it's over. <laughs> that landing, you said it. Anthony Green 150% got the worst of that landing. Well, when was the last time AC Baby took a fall like that? Goodness. Oh! And Anthony Green is feeling it. Wow! What? Out that athleticism from Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Whatever it takes, John. Whatever it takes. Oh! Ah, bicycle! And he is feeling it. Anthony Green. Oh! 
JT Dunn. Anthony Green not in an advantageous position here. Oh, short Meteora to the back of the head oh. of Ace Romero, but the snap and fire of that Savant kick. But there's that prolific oh. elbow. Elbow. Oh my God. Wait a what? Minute. What? Wait a minute. I knew it. What? Oh my God. Hold on. Look at that. JT. Hold on. JT with fire and ire in his eyes. There's no friends anymore. There's only war. JT done. Wrist tape coming off. Elbow pad coming off. <laughs> Game over. And MJF. I apologize. Trying to repair the damage, but JT knows that enough is enough. Hey, I said it all along. Only one guy can win this match. And this, we are witnessing a disintegration of the King's power. Period. Ace Romero, after all the damage he sustained, you said it. What? What? Oh my! Tomakazi! Nope. No! No! Oh! Anthony Green might have torn a hole in his back like Hogan slamming Andre. John MJ have yelling, we're a team earlier. Here's the truth, no one's a team. It's, we've been saying it from the beginning. Oh, my God, massive elbow drop. I think finally now, we have ourselves a four on four match with four guys vying for this championship. Absolutely, this has truly become a fatal four way at this point. The, the alliances have dissolved. And now, things are about to kick into a new gear as all four men looking to summon the will to get back to their feet. And the crowd doing the best they can to assist these four gladiators back to a standing position. John, we got Ace on his feet, Max, MJF. Oh! Can he get Ace out of the ring? There he goes. On the Ace. apron, though. Oh! No, no, we've seen this. No! Oh! And the angle. Oh. Wow. Uh, you, you got me. How many men has Maxwell, Maxwell Jacob Friedman put away with such a pile driver? And the foot on the ropes. With a, such a combo, it's usually academic from there. But in this case, Ace Romero still has some left in the tank. Trying to figure out what to do. He's going to that weapon. Like I said, anything in this building can be used. And MJF has chosen and the steel old chair. And we might start to see MJF coming a little bit unhinged here. The man of such intensity. Sometimes his decisions aren't the best. What? Greenleaf not having it. It's legal. Greenleaf here since day one. Not having oh! the championship got tarnished. But he got tarnished in the process. And now, MJF, with the smile on his face, similar to when the big bad wolf broke into the house that Goldilocks was sleeping in. But Ace caught the chair. Ace not having any of it. Oh no. He's winding up. 
He's preparing. Ken Griffey Jr. type preparation. He's re-strapping the gloves like Nomar Garcia Parra. Ah! Took a little too long. And a King's elbow to the back of the head. Did JT just save him? Are they back? I'm gonna reserve Was that all my part judgment. of the plan? I'm gonna reserve my judgment. Oh no. Oh. JT with a look on his face and he's got that chair in his hand. Of all the monarchs in history, many of them taking the most unceremonious plunge off their throne. Wow! Gunner! We saw the bad intentions. Oh. But MJF capitalized. Where's the ref? Gavin Quinn! Gavin Quinn! Wow! Wow! When Steel met Skull, we thought that was it. MJF is beside himself. He's got to pay attention to what's happening in the match, not argue with the ref. Uh, uh, uh -oh. Max, turn around. Oh! What a lightning kick from Ace Romero. Anthony Green pulling himself up. And, and in this moment, everything they've gone through, from teammates to the worst of enemies, it's all coming to the forefront right now. Meiji wants that Tomikaze again. Off the rope, he got, got it. it, got it. Can he get him over? Shoot the half, right to someone who hit him. Pounds. MJF. Got the boot. Oh! Turn about being fair play. Perfect super kick. And he wants it one more time. Rolls him up. Death by elbow. One more for good measure. Oh. Yep. yep. No. No. What? What? M J F. I. I can't believe it! Right place, right time, and a king walked away!